there are four steps in the site safety inspection process step number one planning the inspection step number two conducting the inspection step number three completing the inspection report and step number four follow up and monitoring corrective actions hello and welcome you are on the platform of safety first life i'm javed and this is part six for site safety inspection training series today we'll discuss how to conduct the inspection as you know the inspection process mainly focuses on four key areas number one people site workforce site staff their behavior and methods of work number two plant it includes machinery equipment vehicles and all other relevant accessories number three premises the workplace itself and the working environment and number four procedures the methods of working safe system of work and permit to work system etc so let's get started without wasting time how to conduct site safety inspection but equally the important question is what makes a safety inspection successful meaningful and effective number 1 look up down around and inside number 2 use the inspection checklist as a guide number 3 document all your findings even if it may not be directly related to health and safety number 4 clearly describe hazards and mark location on the floor plan or on your checklist number 5 record as you go along in case you forget involve workers in the inspection interview them if possible but never disrupt their work processes and work activities number 7 you have to pay particular attention to equipment with unsafe conditions due to stress wear impact corrosion or misuse number 8 report serious hazards immediately to the supervisor number 9 shut down any hazardous item that cannot be brought to a safe operating standard until repaired number 10 wear the appropriate personal protective equipment number 11 don't operate machinery ask for demonstration by a qualified worker and number 12 pay attention to ergonomic risks and worker behavior if you are interested to make a successful site safety inspection you have to memorize all these important points and mention them on a checklist here another important question is what if you don't feel qualified you are not aware of the site operations or activities what to do then you have to ask questions you have to ask for demonstrations from site operatives you have to ask someone who is qualified to accompany you some areas of the work site will have to be inspected by someone who is authorized to be in that space and that might not be you because there are more critical and high risk activities are ongoing and you are not prepared and trained to handle such hazardous activities or operations those areas must be identified so as not to slow down the inspection process this should be done in advance in the planning stage once you are preparing for site safety inspection dear friends and colleagues 
you are on the platform of safety first life if you are first time on this channel kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon for all future notifications and if you find the video informative then like comment and share it with your friends and colleagues let us discuss few examples what to inspect we'll start with buildings and structures point number 1 is there loose material debris a worn carpeting on the floor number 2 are floor slippery oily or wet number 3 are stairways and aisles clear and unblocked number 4 are windows sealed properly number 5 are wall and ceiling fixtures fastened securely number 6 are there stains on ceilings that may indicate a leak number 7 are there molds water rust or excessive dirt on ceilings once you are inspecting buildings and structures you have to keep all these points in your mind in the building and structure you have to consider the atmospheric conditions but what to inspect what to look for is there adequate ventilation is there adequate lighting is there any discomfort in temperature and humidity is there excessive noise are there harmful dust mist fumes or vapors all these points must be considered once you are inspecting a building you have to look for atmospheric conditions it must be favorable and comfortable for workers and staff those are working and operating in that atmospheric conditions furthermore you have to inspect fire fighting equipment is the exits are clear is exit signs are visible extinguishers are they easily accessible and have they been inspected in the last month six monthly routine has been carried out and what about the yearly inspection once you are inspecting the fire fighting equipment you cannot forget the sprinkler systems you have to look is the material stacked close to sprinkler heads on ceiling in the building or a structure you cannot ignore the storage facilities you have to look for cabinets shelves closets bins and racks are they stable are they overloaded are there sharp edges are materials stored safely any heavy boxes placed on top shelves that may fall you have to go through each and every point once you are in a building for safety inspection what are the hazards if the heavy boxes are placed on the top of the shelves boxes may fall material might damage and it can injured a worker or a staff member who is working nearby it means housekeeping is needed another example let us discuss now the electrical power components once we are in a building and we are going to inspect and we are conducting a safety inspection we have to consider the extension cords used extensively are electrical cords exposed in areas where employees walk is electrical wiring properly concealed are there cords or wires under the desk that may cause a tripping hazard as you know wires are tripping hazards electrical wires are placed near a sink with a puddle of water on the floor right beside it potential for electrocution because water is a good conductor definitely in a building in a structure there are chemicals used on daily basis what to inspect in the chemical storage area are all chemical containers labeled is there a designated storage area for flammable 
are combustibles or hazardous chemicals are the containers in good condition free of loose seals or cracks what might be the possible hazards from chemicals no labeling on containers chemicals area fire extinguisher should be mounted in wall poor housekeeping you have to consider all these points what is the hazard what is the risk and how we can avoid and how to include the control strategy these potential hazards and high risk activities dear friends and colleagues once you are inspecting a structure or a building you cannot ignore the openings of the structure or the building there might be pits sumps shafts manholes or floor openings including those usually kept covered you have to look for warning and signaling devices strobes crossing lights horns and warning signs in the building there are elevators escalators dump waiters and man lifts so you have to check cables controls and all safety devices related to elevators and man lifts in the structure there are activities there are people those are performing different activities there might be material handling equipment conveyors cranes hoists forklifts carts or trolleys and you have to inspect all these equipment one by one if there are people definitely they are eating they are sleeping they are playing and they are working there might be containers barrels carboys gas cylinders flammable liquid containers scrap bins waste bins vats and tanks other than the containers there are motorized vehicles automobiles trucks us moving equipment backhoes movers a forklift trucks for shifting material there is 100% the electrical servicing equipment switches power bars outlets ground fault circuit interrupters dear friends and colleagues once you are in a work site your eyes should act as a scanner and you have to go in depth about each and everything that is a fitting that is a fixture that is a equipment that is a machinery that is a operator that is a driver and even though the area is in the domain of welfare facilities you will check each and everything by the safety aspect in the building definitely there are the emergency equipment that may include spill kits first aid boxes emergency telephones emergency alarms and horns you have to look for the maintenance operation and inspection as per the company approved procedures and as per the legal and contractual requirements there might be personal supporting equipment it depends on the type and nature of the building there might be ladders you have to inspect ladders are rungs stable are ladders secured are they free of water or mud is the floor where the ladder is raised free of debris are users maintaining a three point contact at all times and furthermore you have to check the scaffolds scissor lifts catwalks platforms lifelines sling chairs etc all these are the different shapes of personal supporting equipment or the emergency equipment you must know what are the hazards in ladders ladder has broken and missing rungs ladder is unstable the debris on the floor 
Chemicals should always be stored in easily accessible places, not on top of stacks of boxes. As I told you, in the building there is machinery. Is the machine is protected by protective guards? Are there loose bolts, nuts on the fixed guards? Are there cracks on the guards? Gear covers, pulley belt covers, pinch point guards, railings, a blade guards. You have to inspect each and everything. Once you are inspecting a building or a structure under construction, what might be the hazards in machinery guarding? Maybe the guard is there, not properly fixed, and the moving parts of the equipment are exposed. Maybe point of operation hazard is accessible, and the guard offers no protection at all. If this is a building, that building might be a university or a hospital. In this case, there might be laboratories. What you will inspect in the laboratory? Eye wash stations, proper signage, adequate water supply, readily accessible, clean, and clear drains. You will look for chemicals, their storage, labeling, and packaging. Our SDS safety data sheets current within three years of issue date and readily available. Are all containers labeled? Are chemical storage and usage areas designated? And generally, you have to look. Do fume hoods have adequate airflow? Are personal protective equipment being worn? Are shops properly disposed into shops container? If not, what are the hazards? Maybe the SDS safety data sheets are not properly arranged, organized, and available in the storage area. Maybe the chemical container doesn't have a legible label. After completing the laboratory, now you are in the office. What you will inspect in an office? You have to look. Are computer workstations arranged in an ergonomic way? Is adjustable seating available? Is working space adequate? Are desks and file cabinets organized such that dryers? don't open into aisles of walkways does office arrangement allow easy egress under emergency conditions is there cardboard paper or other combustible materials on the floor web of wires under the desk that can act as a tripping hazard and you have to consider the wires should be tied together neatly and be close to the wall all these points you will check once you are inspecting an office and you have to mention the hazards and the risk rating as per the location as per the nature of activity and as per the level of risk remember washrooms are also the part of the building and during the building inspection make sure you have to visit the washrooms as well what you will inspect in the washrooms are mirrors in good condition and firmly secured are locks on stalls in good condition and operational are hinges on doors in good condition and correctly fixed inspect water taps and sinks to check for leaking are soap containers present are toilets flushable are the washing facilities well lit clean and maintain our electrical rooms free of materials particularly combustible materials are there molds or dirt on ceiling that may be health hazard are hallways free of blockage are emergency exits blocked or barred dear friends and colleagues you have to consider the corridors as well is the corridor full of waste material may impede evacuation in an emergency room needs housekeeping also represent a fire hazard as papers and boxes are combustible materials 
dear friends and colleagues you have gone through all the building storage area office you have inspected the machinery plants and equipment you have gone through the laboratory you already highlighted the deficiencies in the chemical storage area you have mentioned all electrical equipment and accessories what to do after visiting or inspecting the whole building you have completed now the second step of site safety inspection process how to conduct an inspection the most important step is now you have to make an inspection report you have to record all your findings hazards risks and corrective action details with your feasible practicable recommendations so the step number 3 will be the most important part of site safety inspection process because now you have to mention your findings on the paper and you have to use your words you have to show your tone and once you will write it down the management middle or top they will go through each and every single word and they will also understand your credibility and your communication skills here i'm giving you some examples of descriptive words that you will use once you are going to write down the site safety inspection report i can share one of my site safety inspection as an example how you have to make inspection and how you have to communicate to site project team as well as the top management about your findings which you are going to discover in the site safety inspection part 6 of site safety inspection training series how to conduct site safety inspection is over now and hopefully part 7 will start how to complete the inspection report thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video hope to see you soon with the part 7 of site safety inspection till then take care good luck and allah hafiz